Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope y'all are doing well. If you remember, around the time I had first started my channel, I had a model on by the name of Judah, and on her I created a really beautiful natural look. But I promised her the next time that we had the opportunity to glam, I would do a really, you know, dramatic smoky eye. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We have her back with us on the channel. So I created this uh, this this beautiful <laughs> dramatic for sure. Um, gunmetal sparkly eye that turned out really fantastic. So without further ado, if you want to learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm taking my plexiglass illuminator along with the glow recipe, watermelon glow niacinamide dew drops, mixing them both together on the back of my hands like so before massaging this into the skin. I've been loving these two products together lately, the hydration from the dew drops along with that glass-like effect, the skin that we get from the plexiglass illuminator makes for the perfect pair. And this is also how I like to apply on plexiglass if I'm looking to apply it all over the skin. Skin. I shear it out a bit by mixing in a moisturizer or serum. And the same goes for your foundation, by the way. If you're looking to give your foundation more glow, just mix in a tiny bit of plexiglass and it will transform it into a completely different finish. So anyways, now that we have the skin prepped and hydrated, I'm going to move on to the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation in the shade 7.8 and apply this right on with a foundation brush. Now, you usually see me use a makeup sponge to apply on foundation, which I am going to use in a minute to further blend this in, but sometimes I like using a brush if I'm looking to achieve lighter coverage. Our model, Judah, naturally has <laughs> incredible skin, so I think going in with a full coverage finish to the foundation would just do her skin a, um, a disservice, really. You know what I mean? And I'm also keeping in mind here that I'm still going to be using a full coverage concealer under the eyes and we're contouring and we're applying powder and all that. So less is more right now and we'll see how it comes together. Next up, I'm using this Too Faced Born This Way concealer in the shade Coco to add some subtle contours to the face. So that includes the hollows of her cheekbones, the jawline, beneath the chin, and around the perimeter of her forehead before I blend and diffuse this out with a makeup sponge. I love this shade of concealer to contour on medium to deep skin tones. It blends beautifully. It, um, it has the perfect undertone to it. And it's versatile in terms of how you can play around with the shade. So what you didn't see see on camera here was, as I usually do, I apply the foundation onto the back of my hands and then dip the sponge or the brush or whatever I'm using into it before applying it on. Now I keep whatever's left of that foundation on the back of my hand, so if I need to lighten or darken the contour or concealer products, I can do so by mixing in a bit of that foundation, which will bring it a little closer to the model or the client's natural skin tone. And that's exactly what I did here. I mixed in just a bit of that foundation we used earlier into this product to create the perfect contour shade for her. And as you see here, once we really start pressing this into the skin and diffusing it out, it blends beautifully. Even with this uh, lighting situation I have. I dimmed down the lights today and used um, like harsher lighting so we really get to see everything. Usually I use softer lighting in my tutorials but I don't know. I, I wanted to switch it up. You all, <laughs> can we talk? Like really can we talk talk? I've been in this creative rut lately. I, I didn't post a tutorial last week because I just wasn't feeling it. It's hard to explain, but I've been feeling so uninspired lately to a point where I haven't even wanted to play around with makeup. And when that's all I know, it, it, you know, it, it kind of sucks, guys. You know what I mean? If anyone's watching who can relate to this, please, I'm sincerely asking, what do you do? By the way, as you saw there, I'm using the Jouer Essentials High Coverage Concealer in the shade Butterscotch to conceal and brighten the under eyes before also blending this out with a sponge. But yeah, as I was saying, I literally woke up the other morning, walked in my filming studio and decided that's it. You know, I want a whole new vibe. I got different lighting, a new camera, a new lens, and just played around with the whole look of it. Now I'm still trying to figure out how to use everything, but I do like how this camera's picking up a little more detail. And I like how 
this lighting doesn't really diffuse or soften the skin, if that makes sense. I like being able to see texture and just overall how the makeup looks on the skin as it does in real life. But you guys let me know. Are you, are you vibing with this new setup or... Do you like the other one better? Let me know down below in the comments because I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. I promise my feelings won't get hurt either way, but I do make these tutorials for you to enjoy. So of course, your opinion matters to me. Alrighty, I'm done with my little ramble. <laughs> back to the makeup. I've head back to the brush I used earlier to apply the contour on with, and I'm using this to soften the edges of the concealer we applied underneath the eyes, which I'll also use to highlight down the center of the nose, and I'll come back later to blend this out. But first, I'm using this Makeup Forever Ultra HD Matte Setting Powder in the shade Golden Beige to set that concealer under the eyes with a powder puff. Now, I, I don't even know where to begin with this. I made so so many mistakes with this under eye today. Starting from the beginning, the concealer shade I chose really wasn't warm enough. And then to make it even worse, I'm applying way too much of this powder right off the bat, which goes against everything I believe in. I like to first set the under eye with a very little bit of powder and then go in and bake with more powder if need be. But I don't know what I was thinking. Clearly, I'm a little off today, but it kind of works out towards the end, I guess. Now for the rest of the face, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Pressed Powder in the shade 3 Tan and lightly applying this around the face with a soft powder brush to set that foundation into place. This really is the perfect product to use on a model today. I'm completely obsessed with how soft the complexion turns out, with the exception to the under eye, of course. <laughs> you know, it doesn't look too bad right now, but later on you'll see when I'm really zoomed in working on the eye makeup, that setting powder did not do her justice. Which, by the way, is not the fault of the product itself. It's 100% my fault. That Makeup Forever powder is truly one of the best setting powders to use around the face, but in a very light dose, especially for somebody who wants a matte finish. But it's not a powder you want to use to bake with, as I did today. But that's all right. We live and we learn. So moving on, I'm using this Fenty Sunstalker bronzer in the shade Mocha Mami to further emphasize that contour we applied earlier. We don't need a lot of this either. Just a little here and a little there to accentuate the structure of her face along the hollows of her cheekbones, the jawline, and around the perimeter of her forehead. Okay, here I've head back to, <laughs> oh gosh, Spencer. I've head back to that powder and I'm using this to bake the jawline right under that contour. And of course, later on in the tutorial, I'll wipe this powder all off. But to begin on the brows, I'm using this Oma Beauty One and Done Brow Styler in the shade 05. This is actually a two-in-one product. It has a pencil on one side and a tinted brow gel on the other. But today, I'm just using the brow gel side. I love our model's natural brow shape, and I didn't find the need to fill it in. I'm keeping in mind that we are creating a darker, smokier eye, so keeping the brow soft and understated makes for a perfect balance. To begin on the eye makeup, I've head back to that Fenty bronzer and I'm lightly blending this across the lid, really focusing this in the inner corner of the eye where the nose bridge is and sweeping it outwards towards her temples. This doesn't have to be overly dramatic as it's just acting as a backdrop for the products we add on top. Next up, I'm using this Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Pencil in the shade Zero and tracing this along her complete upper lash line. And you'll also see me use this to tight line the upper lid as well. I do this by having the model look down towards the floor and I quickly run this liner through. It's not the most comfortable part of the process, but it does make a big difference in the final look. And don't worry about getting this liner totally perfect either because 
we're going to smudge it out anyways. I do that by grabbing a small dense brush and little by little start moving that liner around. Again, not trying to be too perfect here. That's the beauty in a smoky eye. It's supposed to look effortless. And, and now that we're zoomed in here, do you see what I was saying about this under eye? Like, <laughs> it, it, it was struggling. In fact, I almost just wiped it off and started over, but I also wanted to show you how I could attempt to fix it as best as I could, which I'll show you later on. But in the meantime, <laughs> do, do me a favor, just don't look at it. It, it, it. It'll come together later on, I promise. But as of now, I've switched to a clean blending brush that's a little bigger to further blend out this liner. As you can see, it, it's really quick. It's really easy. And honestly, I'm kind of loving how it looks as is. But we're gonna glam it up today by adding on this Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow called Truffle Glitter. And I'm lightly gonna pack this right on top before also diffusing it upwards with a brush. Isn't this eyeshadow so stunning? I absolutely love it. And you all know, I'm not really the type to have individual shadows. You know what I mean by that? Like I, I've never gone out and purchased individual shadows to put in a Z palette and all that. I usually just like using eyeshadow palettes, but this is one of those shadows that I've used for a very long time now. The glitter pigment in it just makes the eyes look like, you know, glistening stars in the night sky. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was so poetic of me. But you get where I'm going with that. I, I love how it completely glams up the look. I've used this a lot on brides as well who want a softer look for the ceremony, you know, with just a bit of eyeliner or something. And then for the reception, if they want something a little more dramatic, I'll take this out and dust it right on and bada bing, bada boom. It's a completely different vibe. And then for the lower lash line here, I'm following the same steps as we use for the upper lid. I'm applying the eyeliner in the waterline. I'll diffuse it out with a detailed blending brush. And then later on, that sparkly eyeshadow. So here is around the time I step back, take a look at what's going on, and decide where I need to fine tune the details. In this case, I wanted a little bit more depth towards the outer corner of the eye. So to achieve that, I've head back to my eyeliner, I've run a little bit of that on, and then using that detail blending brush to diffuse it out. And then to really amp up the sparkle, I'm using this Makeup by Mario Master Crystal Reflector in the shade Quartz and applying this right on top with my finger. This really just, it just makes me fall in love with makeup all over again. I love glitter, I love shimmer, and this product, it does everything, everything I need it to do. I'm gonna zoom in here in just a second. I, I mean, come on. It's so beautiful. And I should say, because um, I've had that Anastasia eyeshadow for so long, I don't even know if they sell it anymore. But if they don't, you could honestly just use a little bit of black or gray eyeshadow to get that smoky effect on the lid, then pop on this crystal reflector right on top and you'll get the very same effect. So next, I'm using this Maximist Mascara from Bare Minerals and running a generous coat of this through the top and bottom lashes before applying on the false lashes. This is the first time I'm using this mascara and I actually quite like it. I find it's given me that density and volume I'm looking for, which will complement the falsies we put on afterwards. The false lashes I'm using today are the Style Lux from Lily Lashes, and I'm using this because they're dramatic enough where you can notice them, but still settle enough so that they're not completely covering up the eyeshadow. Now you're probably wondering if I forgot about blending out the nose highlight that's still there, and to answer that, um, <laughs> yes. Yes, I, I did forget. It wasn't until now when I was applying the false lashes that I realized you know, Spence, you should probably blend out the nose highlight. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I'll start wiping away the powder we've let sit here to bake. Obviously, I'm not thrilled with how the under eye turned out today, but 
you know, that's all right. I, I think I'm being a little dramatic about it. It's not terrible, but I will show you how I try to improve it. So I'm gonna take this CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Powder and lightly sweeping this along the under eye. Now the shade I'm using here is 745 Warm Beige, which is really important because I need the warm peachy golden tone to counteract the grayish hue I'm getting. You can kind of see the difference here, right? The side I use the powder on has more warmth to it. And I always find myself going back to this same powder in the same shade for situations that I need a little color correcting for. Is it perfect now? No, but listen, I can live with this. It is what it is and we gotta keep it moving. So next I'm using this Iconic London Blush and Highlighter Duo in the shade Coral Glow. And I'm using the blush in this palette to add some color to the cheeks. And then in a second, I'll go back to the brush I just used to apply the CoverGirl powder to diffuse out the edges and make sure everything looks seamless. To highlight, I'm using this Makeup Forever Pro Glow Highlighter and using this to add some radiance back into the skin. Especially since I ended up using a little more powder than I wanted to, everything is reading really matte, which is a vibe as well, but I wanted a bit more luminosity to the skin. So I'm running this down the center of the nose and just a bit along the high points of her cheekbones. To begin on the lips, I've head back to that Too Faced concealer we used earlier to contour with, and I'm using that to trace the border of her lips. I know for sure I want to pair this eye makeup with a nude lip, and if you like something more on the subtle side, using your contour product is a great way to line your lips with, but I want something a little more intense in terms of contrast, so I'm grabbing this brown one size point made gel eyeliner in the shade Busty Brown and using this to further deepen the borders of her lips. I was looking to use the cork lip liner from MAC if you know which one I'm talking about but I couldn't find it so I figured you know what Let, let's just use a brown eyeliner and it's giving me exactly what I'm looking for which is a dramatic moody nude lip especially when we add some lipstick to the center and blend everything together. The lipstick I'm using today is this one from Buxom and it's in the shade called Icon. I'm applying this directly to the center of the lip and you'll see me buff it out with an, uh, with an eyeshadow blending brush to get that worn in ombre effect. And I really like this shade for her. It's the perfect warm peachy coral tone that pairs perfectly for not just her skin tone, but also that coral blush we used earlier. And I love the shiny finish of this lipstick too. Honestly, I just love Buxom lip products. I think they're the best and I love how the lips turned out, so. Lastly, I'm using this About Face Light Lock Illuminating Body Shimmer to add some glow to the skin. They have this product in a few different shades, but the one I'm using here today is called Way Out West, which is a bronzy gold tone. This lighting doesn't even do it justice. In the direct sunlight, it looks incredible. And I'm applying this on with their Light Lock Body Brush. I'll link them both down below, along with everything else I'm using today, of course, if you wanna check it out. But this really makes for the perfect last step and how I created this glamorous look on our naturally beautiful model. There we have it kids. I hope you all enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.